Hello, everyone, and welcome to Siemens Network Connections Podcast. My name is Brian Duvall, and I'm here today with Mike Boiso. He's Siemens Copper Business Team Leader. And we're going to talk about something very near and dear to Mike's heart, and that's Category 6A Twisted Bear Copper Cabling. Before we actually jump into the cool stuff, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself so we know who we're talking to? Hey, Brian. Yeah, good to talk to you. Uh, I've been with the Siemens company now 15 years. I've had you know various roles in in product management, and honestly, I've had the opportunity to to manage a number of different product lines. But over the last uh, close to ten years now, I've been primarily responsible for copper systems. So, you know, pretty much global product line direction for for copper. Uh, you know, that encompasses everything from obviously copper cable to all of our you know our connectivity, such as outlets and patch panels, patch cords. Uh, pre-terminated copper trunks. It's a it's a pretty diverse product line and uh, a big part of the company. And it's a it's it's a great it's a great uh, function within within Siemens Company. Yeah, I personally I love the fact that we've got a pretty strong fiber line too. But there's a real healthy sense of competition between between you guys and the fiber team. I think. <laughs> now I I know a little bit about you personally and married kids. Um, yes. I was blown away by the fact that you have your kids into fencing, which I think has got to be the coolest thing ever for a kid to do. But you tell us a little yeah. bit about yeah. <laughs> your so personal two life. Kids, two kids, uh, married two kids. I've got uh, basically kind of that kind of middle school age kids. I've got a, a daughter, 11, a, a son who's 12. And uh, yeah, they 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 keep me they keep me busy and and they they keep me young. That's that's yeah. the best part about uh, about kids for sure. Well, well, as a dad of teenagers, I say they keep you young when they're that age, and they start aging you really quick when they become teenagers. But I'd actually like to start with a challenge, and this is going getting back to Cat Six A, and that's if you were given less than a minute to bring me up to speed on Category Six A in general, I mean, what would you tell me? Okay, so on the clock, 60 seconds, here we go. You know, 6A has been, you know, around for, for quite a while, but in terms of, you know, applications that, that are coming to market, you know, we've, we've seen an explosion of that over the last uh, few years, maybe five, six years. And so there's there's still, you know, a lot of upside potential for 6A. You know, 6A is a, from a, you know, just looking at the standard, it's a 500 megahertz uh, upper bandwidth frequency, you know, you can go a full 100 meters on the channel, 90 meter permanent link. Uh, it supports 10 gig, you know, applications. Uh, when 6A first came out, we saw a lot of that going into to data centers. And today, you know, we have uh, a lot more to talk about in the enterprise space as we talk about Wi-Fi support for power over Ethernet, uh, audio visual applications, security. You know, and so we're starting to see more of those kind of end device type applications where 6A is de being deployed, uh, even more so than the data center, which I think, you know, right now everyone understands that if I'm, you know, if I'm putting copper in the data center, I'm going to be running 10 gig. And so that's that's understood. That's happening. It's been happening for probably a decade now or more. But now, you know, where we're starting to see some real vitality is, is uh, to end devices in the, in the enterprise environment. Now, I understand that there's 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 two main configurations. It's obviously UTP, the unshielded, and shielded. And I know Siemens offers both. What would you tell a you know an end customer or a contractor? You know, what would you tell them? How would you help them choose the best option for their application? Yeah, Brian, at the, you know, where we start the conversation always is with 6A Shielded. You know, we, uh, we've been doing that for quite some time and we've had great success with our customers talking about 6A Shielded. And I think the reason why that is, if you break it down into really simple terms, is that a shielded system just offers the most flexibility and versatility for the, for the wide range of applications, environments that your copper system is going to be deployed in, right? I mean, at the end of the day, you know, as someone who's sitting in front of a customer or installer, you don't really know exactly what's going to happen when that that system gets in the field. You, you don't exactly know what, what they're going to be facing in the installation. You don't exactly know what's going to be happening in that building. Maybe there's going to be a, a lot of uh, kind of noise and humming going on. Maybe there's some tight bends. You know, you just really don't know. Maybe they're going to be running power over Ethernet to a whole lot of end devices. You know, maybe they're not. 
And so when we step back and we say, we're going to put forward a 6A solution that just covers everything and does it, you know, that does it really, really well, we always start with 6A Shielded because, you know, it's going to offer the most immunity. It's going to provide the most ANEX performance. It's going to deliver on POE applications. It's going to deliver that 10 gig application, you know, right every time you know without without fail no concerns you know it's more robust from an installation point of view we, we just know this from a 6 day shielded perspective and i think that's why we always start with that when we're sitting in front of our customers now you mentioned something in there that i know is a you mentioned a next um can you that was a really super big deal when cat 6a first came out but can you actually describe what that is for people who may not be familiar yeah, so alien crosstalk, pretty simple. If you understand that, you know, a common installation practice is that you're going to have cables in, in you know, for example, tray. So one cable surrounded by others as they're trying to get from the closet out to the work area. So what alien crosstalk looks at, it looks at the impact of noise from cables that surround another cable. So you actually measure, you call it the victim cable. That's the one, think of that one is in the center. And we run testing the lab with a bundle, six of cables around that one victim cable. And you actually measure the noise that goes from the outside of the cable, inside the cable. And 6A was the first standard that really said, hey, this actually has an impact you know, at this frequency, you know, on this application. And so there are requirements for lowering that. And so uh, essentially from a six day shielded perspective, by having a, a foil or potentially multiple foils, you essentially limit the, eliminate that. There's just no way noise is getting into that shielded cable. So your, the opening conversation recommendation is um, is 6A shielded. I mean, can you tell us about some of the actual you know, stars in that 6A line? You know, some of the individual products. You mentioned it end to end. Yeah. What, that, what does that mean? And what are all this cool stuff? Yeah. <laughs> cool so options. now we're starting to get into my happy place. We're going to talk, you know, specific products. So yeah, SEMA Company has a, a lot of great 6A products. You know, we uh, we launched ZMAX. Uh, believe it or not, it's it's been over 10 years ago, uh, where we really reinvented the 6A outlet, um, and we've had amazing success in the marketplace with ZMAX. You know, our our, our installers love love using it and, and terminating in the field. Uh, end users at the end of the day are, are thrilled with the overall performance. We have actually even have some nice features associated with our distribution partners that allow them to carry fewer part numbers and still offer the flexibility of, for example, a ZMAX outlet that can do flat and angled with one part number. And it kind of helps eliminate kind of the number of part numbers that you have to support through the channel. So, you know, at the end of the day, it starts with ZMAX. Uh, we have a really great ZMAX outlet. We, we offer that uh, both in Shielded and in UTP. Within the last couple of years, uh, recognizing the need to do um, modular plug terminated links, uh, we came out with a great uh, 6A field term plug. Uh, we call that Z plug. Uh, we use that uh, for both you know, shielded as well as UTP installations. It handles a wide range of conductor type, solid, stranded, et cetera, et cetera uh, different gauges. And uh, again, very similar to ZMAX, uh, really, really success in the market with 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 folks just appreciating how that plug terminates very easily. It's intuitive. The performance is there to support 6A every time. So from like kind of the the engine, if you will, on the outlet and plug side, we have that well covered. We've we've done some other things too. On, on, on our patch cord product line, we have a a very diverse, broad product line. ZMAX patch cords that support, you know, the the high end performance where we have a PCB embedded in the plug, uh, which then, you know, really mates very well with the PCB that's in our ZMAX outlet and it just drives 6A performance. You know, we have blade patch cords for that push pull connector for really tight, high density applications. We've come out with skinny patch cords, which is a 28 gauge conductor, you know, obviously a very small diameter uh, cord you know, also uh, really good for uh, data center applications where uh, you're trying to minimize uh, kind of that blocking of airflow through your cabinets. Or if you just need a smaller diameter cable going into an end device and 
you're, you know, you just need uh, kind of a, a slimmer cord. We, we've got you covered with skinny patch and we've just come out with a, with a, with a brand new, a locket patch cord for, you know, adding a little bit of security. Uh, if you, if you have a patch cord and you want to lock it in place, you know, we have an, uh, a locket cord that, you know, can support uh, not only the, the standard 26 gauge, but also our, our 28 gauge, you know, uh, skinny patch uh, line through Locket. So, you know, we have a, a, a lot of great products. We have some great cable options, uh, both UTP and shielded uh, around the world that we support in, in various jacket types. And so we really have 6A covered um, from top to bottom with some, some wonderful products. We also know there's a lot of mar markets that are still primarily UTP. So if you were sitting in front of a customer that has a strong reason, good reason to go UTP um, by market preference or just personal preference, I mean, what would you what would you say to them? Yeah. So thanks, Brian, for that question. And you know, as we talked about earlier, we, we always start the conversation with our 6A shielded system, and you know, we do believe that's the optimal solution. But there. There are a number of customers out there who who are looking for a UTP solution, and uh, we brought a ZMAX 6A UTP to system to market at the same time as our shielded system, and and we've had really great success with that system as well. Um, you know, our customers really do enjoy you know between our UTP and shielded system, the overall consistent user experience, the overall appearance of the outlets is the same. The usability is the same. You could do flat and angled in the faceplate with one part number, as we've talked about. You know, the termination process is identical between the shielded and UTP outlets. So whether you choose UTP or shielded from certainly from an outlet perspective, it's it's really very similar um, from from an overall user's experience. When you talk about the cable side of things, uh, we we acknowledge that there have been some advances with the UTP technology. You know, we've seen barrier layers come to market, which have helped get those UTP cables smaller. Uh, they do generally a pretty good job of um, dissipating heat for supporting PoE type applications. So on the cabling side, you know, we've seen some advances there as well. But when you put that all together in channel, again, we still come back to that overall shielded solution. Um, so even when we look at our patch panels, you know, we have a, a 1U48 port patch panel. We can do that both in shielded and in UTP. You know, we have some advances, even our patch panel that, you know, might not be completely obvious to the end user, but we, we do some, some things within the panel and the outlets uh, that help create separation between outlets uh, on the UTP and shielded side, which, which helps support Anex, which we talked about earlier in the podcast. So really all the way through the channel, and we've talked about patch cords, we've talked a little bit about cable, we've talked about the outlet, we've talked about Z-plug that can support UTP and shielded. So whether our customer chooses shielded or UTP, you know, we really do have that covered and we can support that and we feel really good about, about that system. Uh, whether or not they they go UTP or shielded, you know, even though uh, you know we would recommend shielded, we certainly understand that there's some folks that that prefer UTP. Now, before we close out, I'm going to make things just a, a little bit tough on you with something we do lightning round. And oh boy, here we go. Well, we well, I, I like to mix industry stuff in with stuff that may ha may be a little bit more personal, um, but I think it it makes for fun, and well, at least it's fun for me because especially if I make people sweat a little bit. But so, when will you get over Tom Brady leaving your beloved Patriots? Yeah, I'm over it. I'm over it. I you know I uh, I hated to see Tom go. Uh, you know, obviously he's a fall hall of famer. He's, he's the goat. Um, but you know, it, you have to wish him well. I, I don't, I don't hold anything against him. Uh, he, he did great things this past year with Tampa Bay. It's just, it's just an incredible story. The fact that he just won another Super Bowl, right? I fully expect that he'll come back to the Patriots, uh, as a, at least for a one day contract and, and he will retire as a Patriot. I, I'm sure that will happen and he will go into the hall of fame as a, uh, as a New England Patriot. Well, that's a newt's take. I hadn't heard that come back for the one day. I thought I've seen, I've just heard a lot of New England people a lot saltier than you. You're a very magnanimous guy. All right. Next question. What is your single favorite, one single favorite semen product? 
Oh, geez, that is a tough one. I, I, I still, I still think that the, you know, the, the Z Max, it's a, it's a very close tie between the Z Max outlet and the, and the Z plug, which we talked about during the podcast. Now, uh, just, uh, both are really great products. Um, you know, I, I guess I'll just give a, a slight, a slight nudge to, to the outlet. I, I don't know why, but, uh, yeah, both, both really good products. Wait, you don't need to have a reason. I yeah. Mean. Good. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you helped design the product. You yeah. gives you some latitude there. All right, here we go. If you could have dinner with any one historically significant person living or dead, who would it be? Oh man. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I got all these, I got all these, uh, folks running through my, I, I, I can, I can tell you who, who, who I think I would enjoy having. I don't know that it would at the end of the day, but I'm, I'm a big fan of, uh, of Tom Hanks and, uh, I just love his, his movies over the years. I think he's a great entertainer, great actor. And I think it would be a, I think it would be a, a, a great dinner to have. I, I don't know if I had, uh, a day to really think it through that I'd come up with with Tom, but I, I, he's one of my favorite people on earth. I, it's better that you don't think about it. And I think yeah. that's a great <laughs> answer. People always say things like Gandhi or Churchill or, you know, Buddha. Yeah. I, yeah. Tom Hanks. I like Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks. He's a good guy. <laughs> well, you know, I, I really I, thank you for bearing with me with those last few questions. I really appreciate you taking the time today. This has been you know, hugely you know, helpful, even for me. And I obviously hope it's going to be just helpful for our audience to really understand Cat 6A, you know, from those, those two angles and start to understand some of the things they need to be considering when making a decision like that. Um, so unless you have any last thoughts, I'm going to thank you for being here. Sign off. Thank everyone for listening. And uh, hope they come back around next time. Any yeah. Last words? Uh, well, just thank you for the opportunity, uh, Brian. And uh, it was a pleasure. And it's a Friday. So I wish you a happy Friday. Have a great weekend and stay safe up there. You as well. Thanks a lot. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody.